Good afternoon y buenas tardes a todos. Ha sido un placer regresar a Madrid después de 15 años y gracias por darme la bienvenida. The last time I was in Spain was 15 years ago and I learned a very important lesson. I'd planned to take my young daughters on a vacation, a place I knew to be very family friendly and full of wonderful people, and I thought of Spain. I also spoke the language, having been a PG expat in Mexico for five years. Online, I found a small apartment across from the Retiro Park, and I was very excited to think about taking my young girls to Madrid. About two weeks before our trip, while on the phone with my mother, she asked if I would try to look up some of her old friends that were in Spain, a couple, Charlie and Carlita. She said she hadn't heard from them in a while, but that she knew they would love to connect with us and that we would love them. My mother's voice was sweet and very hopeful for this reunion. I asked my mother when she last heard from these friends, and she shared that they hadn't been in touch for 30 years. <laughs> they had gone to school together, and Charlie and Carlita had subsequently moved to Spain, after which they lost contact. My mother didn't have an address, but thought they might live in Madrid. I told my mother I would surely try to look them up, but of course, in the back of my mind, I thought the chances would be very slim. About a week before we were to leave, another friend of my mother's tracked down an email for, Car for Charlie and sent it to me. I sent Charlie an email, never expecting to hear back, when just as quickly I received a response saying he would love to meet us. He wrote several paragraphs about how much he and Carlita had adored my parents what they did in grammar school together, in high school, in college, how they had been best friends. And then they lost contact. When I shared the address of the apartment I had rented in Madrid, we were surprised. Charlie and Carlita lived right across the street, walkable to the apartment that I had rented. At the last minute, we convinced my mother to fly with us to Madrid, and we spent a wonderful week with Charlie and Carlita and their beautiful family, enjoying traditional Spanish merienda at their home, meeting their son and daughter, their children, grandchildren, going to local parks, music venues. That one connection literally made our trip to Madrid the truly wonderful family vacation that it was. So it's with a very warm heart that I stand here before you today in this truly spectacular city, Madrid. I'm here this morning to share our latest learning in the area of philanthropy. Investing in the future of empowerment, really investing in the future of people, in the future of people in need. Crowdfunding, impact investing, data decision making, sustainability, venture funds, partnerships, entrepreneurships, and so much more. We've heard all of these concepts discussed at this conference. And most of these very same business concepts are also driving the innovation we are seeing in the world of philanthropy. In the past, as Susan mentioned, we've often thought of philanthropy more in terms of charity, of giving handouts to those in need. But today, philanthropy is not about charity. It's about so much more. It's about driving sustainable solutions and entrepreneurships, the power of technology-driven connections, leveraging business practices. It truly is about changing futures for the long term. Today, institutional and personal philanthropy is on the rise around the globe. In a recent UBS and Harvard study of 260,000 foundations and nonprofits across 40 countries, philanthropic global assets are estimated at $1.5 trillion, with the US $400 billion alone. There's also growing global support for the role that philanthropy should play to help address social and economic challenges. Here in Europe, legal and fiscal changes have encouraged the growth of philanthropy. From Germany to Italy, Spain, France, and Belgium. Similarly in Asia, both China and Singapore have new policies and new tax incentives to encourage the philanthropic sector. And in the Middle East, both Saudi Arabia and the UAE have recently begun publicly promoting philanthropic activity. 
Most recently in Africa, we are seeing the growth of philanthropy by Africans for Africa, as exemplified by Safaricom Foundation and so many more. Today's most successful business leaders feel a sense of social responsibility, particularly as we see an even greater economic divide. Many are choosing to divert more and more of their personal funds to philanthropy, often leveraging the very same innovative business practices and approaches that helped them become so successful in the first place. An increasing number of corporations are building philanthropy into their business models, as Susan spoke. In May of this year, Alibaba's Jack Ma, referenced by Luigi Matroni in his wonderful, insightful remarks yesterday, claimed that philanthropy is at the core of the Alibaba business model. Many other corporations, including those you lead, are also having a very strong focus on philanthropy, including Google, Coca-Cola, Apple, Walmart, our own Procter & Gamble, Pfizer, and so many more. Not only is corporate philanthropy good for people, it's also quite good for business. A key consideration is the importance that the 80 million millennials today place on philanthropy, on giving back. Giving back, indeed, is of real interest to millennials, officially between the ages of 23 and 38, though broadly 20 to 40, across the world. Are there any millennials in the audience today? Okay, excellent. Now, certainly our visionaries under 40, congratulations, you guys give us a lot of hope. For those of you who are not millennials, somebody referenced old millennials. I don't know if I like it, I like baby boomers uh, elsewhere, but how many of you have children or grandchildren that are millennials? Majority. Sometimes millennials get a bit of a bad rap, but I'm not gonna go there today. A 10-year study published in 2019 by the Case Foundation, studying 150,000 millennials, shows that they desire to create positive impact not only in the community, but in their daily work as well. They see themselves as everyday change makers, where philanthropy and doing good is part of your everyday life, not something to be saved for your later years. They view their assets as equal and significant. Assets including time devoted to philanthropy, money donated to philanthropic and nonprofits, social media shares, assets to give some nonprofits some visibility. Most important, millennials will make up 75% of the global workforce by 2030, that's just 10 years away will inherit an estimated $50 trillion of intergenerational wealth transfer. And research shows that they are more likely to give back than other generations. So with more and more innovative business practices being incorporated into philanthropy, philanthropy is poised to make an even greater impact. Business practices coupled with technology-driven connectivity what we've heard about yesterday and today, are at the heart of innovation in philanthropy. To help bring this to life, let's take a look at how one nonprofit, Bead for Life, and its street business school is empowering women in Uganda to change their lives through income-generating business entrepreneurships and connectivity. Get ready for a powerful and loud opening. I've seen women start up businesses with less than a dollar and they've transformed their lives. SBS so the first thing Street Business School does is to make them realize that they can take charge of their lives. Then we give them practical tools to start and grow their own businesses. We actually walk the journey with you. We call it coaching. There's something you're going to learn from me and there's something I'm going to learn from you. You understand your situation better than I do. 
and I'm going to guide you. Two years after they've graduated, we see an average increase in income for our women that we serve in the program of 211%. These other NGOs that are working at the grassroots, they are the experts of their communities. So we share with them the street business school approach and they're able to go and implement this in their communities. In only four months, we have been able to train 230 women. Any organization can use this model. I love the energy in the woman when she says, I am a businesswoman, and she's so proud. And really, it is about the individuals, the individuals and how women are changing the economic empowerment, their opportunity for themselves and their families. Safina, shown here, is a woman in Uganda who's known poverty all her life. She left school in the seventh grade and began selling tomatoes on the roadside with little success. Now 19, she recently completed Bead for Life Street Business School and started a new business selling belts. She sells them on a busy street in Kirika Town, advertising them to people leaving work. She's learned to keep a large stock to attract a crowd, practices basic accounting. Her income is up nearly fourfold, and this is just the beginning for this young woman and her family. Today, she says, I feel so good, I can hardly sleep, I know I can get anything I want. Today, Street Business School has 39 partners across 10 countries. Successful business practices and technology-driven connectivity are at the heart of the success as they scale their proven model. They're tracking key performance indicators, and they're estimating their social return on investment. Street Business School is expanding in Africa and now moving on to Asia with visionary plans to impact over one million women and five million children by 2027. And Beat for Life Street Business School is just one of the many philanthropic organizations we have studied, leveraging business practices and connectivity to drive economic empowerment. From Adelante Foundation in Honduras to Beyond Relief in Haiti, to Elements in India, Fabreto in Nicaragua, Harpenden in Uganda, Joy Corps entrepreneurships in Thailand, the People's Participation and Education in Tanzania, and the Asian Community Alliance, and so many more, 55 in total, driving economic empowerment across the world. So what's the common denominator with all of these nonprofits? While they are, in fact, focused on driving economic empowerment, leveraging business scales, and new technology to connect, collaborate, and maximize impact, they also have one other significant common denominator. Behind each of these innovative organizations are individual P&G alumni volunteering their leadership at the grassroots levels to change the futures of people in need. Whether it's P&G alum Enrico Donofrio volunteering with Nuovi Horizonte in Italia, or Margaret Semprit and Ed Rigo at Mercy Neighborhood in the U.S., or Lucy Sheehan with Bead for Life, Mario Contreras at the Co-op for Education in Guatemala, and Henry Ho with Joy Corps in Thailand, or the 25 P&G alums shown here. We all know that innovation and impact comes from individuals, individuals committed to investing in the future of people. And behind each and every one of these PNG alums and another 25 that are still being posted is the PNG Alumni Foundation. With our shared PNG values, we are indeed investing together and creating opportunity as a key element of the PNG Alumni Network mission to create impact through events, content, and philanthropy. The foundation has awarded over 80 grants totaling $1.2 million, and we're just getting started. We've helped fund 55 nonprofits spanning five continents and 25 countries, changing futures for hundreds of thousands of people. Every nonprofit we fund has a PNG alumni grant champion playing a key role, a leadership role, to maximize impact. In fact, the Alumni Foundation conducts a competitive grant selection process each year to help ensure that we fund the very best of all the grant requests. They rise to the top. We are also able to leverage the large and growing alumni network for a one plus one multiplier effect that we call beyond the money. 
increasing our applicants' awareness, their PR effectiveness, valuable connections with other alums working in similar areas, and more. We're indeed changing futures every day. And right now, we're in the process of creating a global movement for the foundation, a movement of P&G Alumni Foundation donors and ambassadors. In 2016, we established our first donor-advised fund, helping us to distribute and monitor and work with all the various nonprofits that we support. And now we're ready to scale these efforts across the globe. Why? Why a P&G Alumni Foundation? We all give to our local charities and our local uh, organizations. Keep doing that. But we believe in the talent and the collective power of our 35,000 globally connected alums. We believe in giving back, in the virtuous circle of sharing our business training with others, and in leveraging this network to drive new connections and benefits far beyond the money. We believe in the trust and the involvement of our PNG alums as grant champions and stewards of the money. So let's take a look at a very short video that helps bring this to life. And our famous PNG alum celebrity who volunteered as our voiceover talent. This celebrity is very famous, served many years at PNG, and was a real star for many years at Disney. So let's take a look. It's not about where we start, where we're born, our race, our age, our religion, or gender. It's about where we're going and the opportunities that help us get there. Because when you think about it, there were opportunities along the way that helped us achieve all that we did. There were schools and teachers and mentors who supported and empowered us. But unfortunately for too many, opportunities and empowerment never come. Which is why the PNG Alumni Foundation is working to make a difference for those less fortunate. By partnering with charitable organizations whose core beliefs line up with our mission and our alumni. Charities who work to economically empower those who have never been empowered through vocational training, job opportunities, and business education. All while leveraging our greatest resource, the PNG Alumni. Through your continued generosity and support, our impact has been tremendous and far reaching. Like with Fabretto in Nicaragua, which has provided thousands of students with secondary education and vocational training. Like with Loden in Bhutan, which has funded nearly 80 entrepreneurial ventures and put over 500 people to work. And with Mercy Neighborhood Ministries in Cincinnati, which has helped thousands of inner city adults break out of poverty through job training and employment. While we've made great strides, there is so much more that we can do because there are still so many people who need education, who need training and empowerment. So many people who need an opportunity. And that opportunity can start with you. A round of applause for our terrific voiceover talent, John Pepper. John is here with his life partner, Francie, and I can thank John and Francie enough for all the early support they have given us for the coaching, the partnership as a donor. And I love this picture because John is looking at, at Francie and Francie wears her heart on her sleeve and she's always empowering people all the time. So thank you, John and Francie. In addition to John and Francie, we have many other early donors coming on board, including, of course, all the PNG Alumni Network Board, all our Foundation Board, our Women's Forum leaders, people like Martha Miller, Mel Healy, Bracken Darrell, Sammy Kahale, Bernd Bates, Jaquino Costa, Uta Hagen, and so many more. In fact, as of today, and before we launch our first ever broad-based marketing and awareness campaign, we already have nearly 100 donors. We accept donations of any size. Individual donations to date range from $100 to $100,000, and donations of every size in between. We're adding names to our donor honor roll list on the pngalumnifoundation.org website every month, 
So check in, and a gift of any size is recognized and certainly goes a long way. Concurrent with our plans to launch a global awareness campaign, we're building a network of global ambassadors, P&G alumni millennials, boomers, and more. In fact, since we announced the ambassador program, we already have 40-plus alumni foundation members. We invite you to be a part of the foundation movement, as a donor or an ambassador or both. Feel free to join the millennials. Pull out your phone and click the Donate button on our digital conference programs. Pick up a postcard flyer and scan the QR code at your table. Or go old school and just see me face to face or one of our foundation board members. In closing, the world of philanthropy is growing globally. Business leaders are becoming more socially conscious and millennials, alongside us old ennials, are key to future growth. Business practices and increased connectivity are driving success, all with the goal of increasing impact. Our shared values, we're investing together and creating opportunity. We're poised to change the futures of people in need and leverage the connections of our large and growing network. And in case you're wondering about the 15-year-ago connection I made with my mother's friends here in Madrid, we reunited yesterday and discovered that their granddaughter is currently in the same class as my daughter at Georgetown University. It's a small world. Muchas gracias por su atención, and we look forward to partnering with you on the foundation.